This episode of Switchcraft is brought to you by patrons like Otterscotch. Support Switchcraft and my other content for as little as a dollar and get exclusive rewards at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. We'll name that patron back record. Oh, you know what? Today is a uh, Saturday, so that means I got to open up my ad read thing for Podnuts. And this would be the third one, I think. I'm going to have to look that up. Let's see. What do we want to talk about? You know what? Where is it? Here we go. I have to get a prop, actually, just so people know what it is. In case you're curious, this is a 3D printed uh, rail holder for the Joy-Cons. Episode 107 of Switchcraft is also brought to you by the Podnuts Tech Podcast Network at podnuts.com. That's P-O-D-N-U-T-Z.com. And at that website, you're going to find all kinds of different shows. They've got lots and lots of stuff. Um, there's one show hosted by Brett, Aaron, Chad, James Jonas, Liam, Flying Rich, and Dor. And they talk about building, breaking, and learning, covering everything from making 3D printing, CNC milling, custom designing, and selling goods or services involving maker movement. Uh, and, you know, if you're watching the video version of the podcast, I'm holding up the, um, the straps that come with your Nintendo Switch. And what I've got here is uh, a little 3D printed thing that a buddy of mine at work has a 3D printer. And he made this for me. And you just slide the, the, the rails right onto the side of it. And it's really, really cool. And if you want to learn how to make something like this, then I think you should check out The Makers. That's The Makers with a Z. And if you want to find that show, you can head on over to podnuts.com. That's P-O-D-Z-N-U-T, or no, P-O-D-N-U-T-Z.com. And thank you very much to the Podnuts Tech Podcasting Network for sponsoring the show. Sponsor. Yeah, it's really cool. I wish I had, like, you can get the, um, well, like I said, listen to their podcast to find out how to make stuff like this. But uh, my buddy made this, and, uh, like, it even has, like, a little hole in it, so you can, like, you can hook it to something, to your case. But this is great. It's very, very well designed, because on the back, like, the straps just go through these little spots like that. I think it's fantastic. All right. That sponsor done. Oh, I need to check iTunes for a review. Only take a second. Waiting for iTunes to open. And now I got to search for my podcast. iTunes is so slow. I wish Apple would, would fix it. So slow. Well, I moved up a little bit. That's good. Might have a new review. Most recent. Yeah, we do. All right. Go back. And let me make this just a little bit smaller. 
All right, here we go. <clears throat> Switchcraft is recorded live three times a week at 3 p.m. at U.S. Eastern on Tuesday, Thursday, and on Saturday at whatever time the universe allows. So tune in at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp, just like these awesome people did. We've got Vaxer, Kodiak Moonwolf, Planeswalker80, The Casual Cleric, Snow Goes Ham, Bravd, Beats Alive is here, scrolling, scrolling. We've got Vaxer. Oh, scrolling. We've got ooh, Super Nintendo is here. And if I missed any, uh, Paralegal Princess, Nakashima Fied. And I think that I've gotten everybody who has been talking. Beats Alive is here. I don't know if I said them already or not. But, you know, there's also a bunch of lurkers who are not talking right now. And they are just as important. But I'm not going to call them out because I probably don't like that. So thank you guys for listening live. I really appreciate it. Uh, again, that's twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. We've got a new iTunes review today. Uh, this is from dead picks one, 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 nine. They say it's a great show. We give it five stars. And they said, I love how informative and to the point the show is. The show is laser focused and the host is very knowledgeable. Only complaint would be that I wish the episodes were longer. That's the second person who said that they want the episodes longer. Um, which is the direct opposite that a lot of people say. Uh, I appreciate that you want to hang out more with me. If you are, feel like the episodes are just a little too short, tune into the live show, uh, or you can watch the live show either on YouTube or at my Twitch page after the fact. And when you're there, you're going to see the uncut version. So I end up putting out a the, the audio file is a cut version. So I cut out stories that I might, might not necessarily... Uh, want on the audio portion, but you get the whole thing either on YouTube or uh, Twitch. Uh, so thank you very much for the review. That really does help. I also received an email this week. If you want to be, uh, if you want to email the show, the email address is runjumpstomp at gmail.com. Casual Cleric says that I'll be the third to say that. They want the show to be longer. Thank you, Casual Cleric. Um, so I got an email. This one's from Joel. They said, a few weeks ago on the podcast, you mentioned that you were fed up right up to here uh, with Amazon not delivering on time, but didn't really want to switch from buying games from Best Buy because you would have to go pick them up. I wanted to let you know that Best Buy will ship games to you for free. I recently stopped buying from Amazon and joined the Gamers Club program. It's great so far. Mario Odyssey was the first game I got with the club, and I got a $10 bonus coupon for buying, along with $5 off for joining the club. Long story short, I'm getting Doom for $32. The reason I decided to go with Best Buy over Amazon is that Amazon makes you pre-order to get the discount. I was forcing myself to buy games I wasn't sure about because I wanted the 20% off, but it's no longer an issue, Joel. Joel, thank you very much for the advice. And I am such an Amazon fanboy. I've like, we've had Amazon Prime for years and years and years at my house. And I'm just a huge fan of Amazon Prime. But you make a compelling argument. Uh, I'm definitely going to look into the Gamers Club program and see if it is actually a better price. And the other reason that I've been told, and I could be wrong about this, but the other reason I've been told as to why you might want to join the Best Buy Gamers Club is because it applies to stuff other than video games, stuff like Amiibo or maybe strategy guides or something, if that's the kind of thing that you buy. Whereas I believe that only uh, actual games are supported on Amazon. Now, I could be wrong, but Amazon also has another advantage that may or may not be correct. I've seen that they've been selling digital games on Amazon as well. So if I buy a digital game through Amazon, basically you get a code to put in on the eShop, do I get the discount that Amazon gives? And then I wouldn't have to worry about delivery anyway. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for the email again runjumpstomp at gmail.com if you want to have your voice heard. You can also tweet at me at runjumpstomp. You can use the voicemail 260-RUN-JUMP or of course you can call into the live show by heading on over to our Discord, being a regular member and then hopping in the calling in channel during a live show. I'll grab you, pull you into the, on the air and we'll have a conversation. Uh, and that's runjumpstomp.com slash discord.
All right, that's feedback. Hey, Super Kato 1K. I feel like I fought against you earlier. Did I fight against you earlier, Super Kato? On um, whatever that game was that I was playing. What game was I playing? Darwin Project. Thank you, Kimbalina, for confirming that for me. What I'm doing is I'm rearranging my monitors a little bit so I have two, I can see chat a little easier. Planeswalker says, is somebody still on the fence about uh, the switch you love turning tuning into the show planeswalker get off that fence buy a switch you are going to love it oh that's where i i knew that i recognized your name uh the arrow to the knee collective is a, a group of streamers that were invited by a super awesome streamer named game Olio dan uh and they invited me and they we've got a cool little logo of a stick figure getting shot in the knee with an arrow all right Let's talk about the news. Let me open up this right here. All right, this is a Wall Street Journal article, so I can't read the whole thing. So I'm depending on Reddit. Super Kato says, Switch is so much fun. Picked one up for the kitty a couple weeks ago and have played it more myself. <laughs> We've got two in my house, one for me, one for my son, because I didn't want to share. I was being selfish. All right, here we go. This is a Wall Street Journal article, so I don't have the whole thing, but I have a summary by one of three on Reddit. Uh, and basically, it's Nintendo's game plan to increase Switch production. Uh, so it goes on to say, the Kyoto-based company is sketching out a plan to make 25 to 30 million Switch. What's the, plural, what's the plural of Switch? It's not Switches. I think it's just Switch. Anyway, 25 to 30 million Switch consoles, there we go, in the next fiscal year, which begins April 2018. 25 to 30 million. Now, if we take... What and, and there's more to read, which I'll, I'll, I'll get to in a second. Um, if we if we take a look at what they are projecting to sell, Nintendo originally said that they were going to sell seven million in the first year. Then they increased that to 10 million. And now in the first fiscal year, they're projecting that they're going to sell 14 million, which is really good because normally Nintendo is a company which for the past few years has constantly been saying we're going to hit this mark and then miss it and have to lower projections. So they were constantly increasing projections, which is great. Uh, so I like to hear that. So if Nintendo actually hits its projections, which I think that they will, they're on track to do so, and Nintendo's a conservative company, usually they lowball it. Uh, so I think that they're gonna hit their projection of 14 million in the first fiscal year, which ends in March. And then you add that together with the idea that they're going to make 25 to 30 million next year that's pretty impressive because that means that they're looking to have in the first two years 40 almost 45 million consoles in the wild which is bananas that's actually really close to how the Wii did let's take a look at what the rest of the article said um Let's see, it has begun informing business partners about it. Um, they said the plan is still in early stages and Nintendo could aim higher depending on sales during this year's holiday season. Some people in the industry say Switch could surpass the original Wii, which set the record as Nintendo's best-selling console with more than 101.6 million shipped. Nomura Securities analyst uh, Junko Yamamura, he forecast. Uh, cumulative sales of 115.8 million by March 2023. So, I mean, these analysts, and I use all kinds of quotes here, uh, I don't know how accurate they are, but the idea of Nintendo selling 115 million consoles by 2023 in, in, in five years, 
that's pretty great. That's really, really great. I think that if if they make it to 40 to 45 million by the end of the second fiscal year, I think that that's a crazy amount to have sold. And some people are saying uh, that Nintendo owes its success with the Switch to its failure with the Wii U. Um, but I, I really think that that really has more to do with every console maker learns from its mistakes. And if you look at the past, let's talk about what's happened with the past with console makers. So the PS2 was the, the top dog during its generation. And then that company got really, really cocky, Sony, they got really cocky and they screwed it up on the PS3. They said that we're going to sell it for $700. Uh, They forced Blu-ray down your throat. It was a mistake. And the Xbox 360 came out and destroyed them basically. So then during that generation, Xbox 360 was huge, absolutely huge. PS4 was far behind. Nintendo was like, are we even around right now? Uh, I was still playing Nintendo stuff, but a lot of people weren't. And then when we got to the next generation, PS4, Xbox One, the Xbox One had all kinds of problems. Zap DC in chat is correcting me. It was $600, not $700. Thank you, Zap, for the correction. Uh, But the Xbox One, they were really, really cocky, and they were trying to shove all of these other features down our throats that gamers didn't necessarily want, like the Kinect, uh, which was basically the Blu-ray of that generation. It was one more thing that they were trying to add that people didn't necessarily care about. So there was that problem. And the Xbox One kind of had some serious issues. They also lost a whole bunch of exclusive titles Uh, like, well, I don't know that they lost a bunch or they just never really got those exclusive titles. Whereas the PS4 had a whole bunch of exclusive titles. If you look at the, the, the pattern, it seems to be whoever does really well in one console generation kind of drops the ball in the next one. I hope that doesn't happen with the switch. I hope that whatever follows up the switch later on from Nintendo, I don't, I hope they don't get too cocky but it really feels like Nintendo is knocking it out of the park. And the idea that they might be able to sell 35 million consoles, no, um, I'm sorry, 45 million consoles in two years is really, really fantastic. And it's fantastic not just because I want Nintendo stuff to be popular. Um, The reason it's fantastic is because that means that that is a lucrative, it looks lucrative to third parties And hopefully they will port their games to the Switch. Or what would be even better is if they made games specifically for the Switch with the Switch's features in mind and then ported them to other consoles rather than porting down some some other stuff. Uh, Console Hot 92, hopefully I didn't say your name wrong. It said, they said, can we all agree that the Game Boy Advanced is the greatest, is the best handheld of all time? Um, no, I, I can't agree with that. I think the switch is a much better handheld. I think that this machine right here, I know that Nintendo says that this is a home console first and a portable second, but I think that this is the best handheld that I've ever played. Uh, especially as somebody who is a Twitch streamer, because I can hook this up to HDMI easily and stream from it, from it. Uh, admittedly, that's kind of a niche thing. But I think that this is fantastic. Plus, the idea that I can play two-player games on the go with just one console is awesome. So this is my choice for best best uh, portable system of all time. And if you're wondering what I was holding up, those of you listening to the audio show, I was holding up a Switch. All right, uh, let's move on. And actually, I'm just going to edit that last part off. I was holding up a switch. All right, holding up those of you listening to the audio. I was holding up a switch. All right, uh, let's move on. All right, let me delete. Listening to the audio show, I was holding up a switch. There we go. Let's see. Kodiak Moonwolf says, I've been requested by a certain streamer's mini monkey 
to join some Mario Kart. So I'm off to play Mario Kart. See you later, Moonwolf. Thanks for coming by. Casual Cleric says, the only reason I'll be able to stream Rocket League now is because of the Switch release. That's cool. That is cool. All right, let's take a look. What's the next story? Oh, I don't have a link for the next story, but that's okay. Switchcraft this is, is reported live three times. Three times. <laughs> I forgot to turn down my mixer. Let's hit record again. Well, I don't have Doom for the Switch, but I just read that Doom lets you play with friends. Let's just let that sink in for a second. So EA, they don't let you play with friends on FIFA. You know, they, they said that our big test for the Switch is that we're going to bring FIFA, our most popular sports title, to the Switch. And everybody was like, oh my gosh, they must be really taking it seriously. And I talked about this before, probably last episode. I just want to remind everyone that EA is required by their contract with FIFA. I heard this on a podcast, so it could be wrong. Uh, required with, on their contract with FIFA to port FIFA to every system. That's why EA put it on the system. And then EA kind of did some underhanded, dirty tactics by saying... Okay, if you want more EA games from us, make sure that you buy FIFA. And then they didn't allow players to play with their friends unless it was local. It just sounds like all kinds of uh, screw ups over there, like one hand's not no, not uh, understanding what the other's doing, or maybe they just don't care. I know a buddy of mine bought FIFA and then returned it because he said it was so frustrating to not be able to play with their friends. And I think that if Bethesda can do it and Nintendo can do it, then EA can do it too. And I think that what was happening is EA said, look, on the PS4 and Xbox One, it has it built in where you can play with your friends. And Nintendo is not blameless here. It would be wonderful if... Nintendo would make it so that it's easy for developers, like so that they wouldn't have to develop a party system. But Doom lets you match up with your friends. So clearly it's possible that uh, id Software is able to do it. Then EA should be able to do it too. Uh, Console Hot 92 says Eurogamer wrote an article that this is Nintendo faults, not EA's. There's no native friends list on the Switch that is compatible with all games. While that is true, console hot, Mario Kart and Splatoon, they let you create lobbies in the games. Doom lets you join your friends. And while I do think that part of this is on Nintendo for not giving us a, a friends list that is compatible with all games, Doom is able to do it, so therefore FIFA could have been able to do it. And I think that EA was just trying to do the least amount of work as possible. And I'm not blaming the devs here. I'm blaming the suits. The suits probably said, look, we need to ship this now or, or we're going to miss some deadline that has to happen. And the devs are like, well, but we still don't. We haven't implemented an ability for players to play with each other. So why don't we hold off? And probably the suit said, no, we're not going to hold off. We're going to ship now. And that's just the way it goes. Uh, too often the suits are in charge and not the devs, which is always a problem. Uh, the casual cleric in chat says, yeah, the online might have some updates in the near future. Hopefully it does get better. You know, we're going to find out what happens on Tuesday. Rocket League, if Rocket League doesn't let you play with your friends, that then that, that'll be kind of telling. And so Rocket League comes out on Tuesday. I'm very excited for that game. And I hope that they make it very easy to play with your friends. Now, Rocket League lets me play with my friends on Steam. So my guess is it's going to work on Switch as well. I probably won't be able to invite somebody from Steam to join me. Um, I'm not sure if it allows cross... I know that they have cross-platform play with PS4 on the PC now, but I don't know if I'm just going to be able to say, Hey, 
uh, so and so on Xbox One. Let why don't you join my 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 team in Rocket League while I'm on Nintendo? That seems complicated. I don't know how they're going to get around that. Uh, Console Hot ninety two says Dragon Ball Xenoverse two sold four hundred thousand on the Switch. That's big. Dragon Ball Fighter Z is coming. I hope. You know what, Console Hot? I've got some good news for you. Bandai Namco, Nintendo and id software were having this weird little twitter love fest yesterday where they were uh tweeting funny little things back and forth and i think that bandai namco said that they were planning on bringing uh, a lot more games to the switch and i believe that they make dragon ball fighter z so you know knock on wood uh, casual cleric says rocket league day one is cross play compatible with xbox and pc from what i've heard that's true casual but can you invite friends from xbox and pc or does it just mean that like i make a friend uh, uh, a group with some friends on my switch and then we might play against somebody who's on the xbox or on the pc that's the question that i'm asking and hopefully we'll find out on tuesday All right. I'm I'm trying to get away from the part where I go, and now let's do the next story every time. Uh, so I'm just cutting it off sometimes. Uh, so that would be uh, Friends. And I didn't name the previous track, so let's name that. And that would be Millions. And File, say Project As. Okay. Desktop. SC 107. All right. Exactly, Beats. That's that's why I do those so that I don't have to come up with a segue. Let me grab a drink real quick and we'll move on to um, something that I'm excited for. All right, back and record. Where is it? I might want to click this first. If you are looking for a fantastic indie game that a lot of people missed, then I've got a game for you, but I need to warn you before we before we go any further. The game is really hard. It is very very hard. It is punishing, but it is also very rewarding and extremely fun. I think and that game is has been Heroes. Now it's weird for me to say this because I often demonize uh, games GameStop. I'm not a fan of GameStop even a little. And they are the publisher of Has Been Heroes and the developers Frozen Bite. And they've this is a really strange game. And if you've missed it, uh, I'm sorry. You've got to pick up this game. It's so good. Basically, the way the game works is there are three lanes and you have three heroes. One hero in each lane. Monsters are coming down the lane to you. You have to make sure that the monsters don't reach you by attacking the monsters before they get to you. You you switch your characters between the lanes and every time you attack, like your your character will run out, hit somebody, and then the game pauses for a second. And that's what makes the game so fun is because now you look at the board and you're trying to decide, okay, where do I move my characters around to? I got to move my mage up to this level. I got to move my warrior down to this level. And then we'll move my bard into this row. And then so you switch all your guys around. And then when it comes up their turn to attack again, you send them back out. It's a really rewarding and fun cycle that happens in the game. And it's also a roguelike. So every time you play, it's different. Uh, so you've got different paths to go. You're going to fight against different enemies, except for the boss. Uh, you'll find different abilities. And the reason that I'm talking about this game, which was a launch game for the Switch, I believe, 
uh, is because the game is having an expansion and the expansion is out now. Uh, so they've added a couple of things. Uh, let's see. New to has been heroes are Amadeus the Wizard, Pontius the Knight, Zoya the Thief from Trine. So Frozen Bite also makes the Trine games. And so those characters from Trine are now playable characters in um, has been heroes. Uh, in order to access these characters, you have to unlock the epic quest mode. Um, they also added Sky Temple to it, a new region along with a challenge mode and a seed more seed. I think that means seed mode. Uh, and I believe that what that means is you can get a seed and then you can share that seed with somebody else. And then both of you are having the same experience. And you can see who does better. Uh, they also said... Uh, let's see, what else do they say here? Oh, the epic quest mode will add a tr will be a true test of skill for most veteran players as the heroes have no starting spells. Oh my God, that sounds terrible. Um, oof, man, this game is brutal already. And to start and have something harder than it already is, I I'll never get, get past that. Uh, complete with custom anima anim an animations there we go amadeus attacks with a box oh man so the okay if you never played trine there's a wizard in the game and you draw a box and he a box will appear and then fall down so it looks like amadeus has a box that falls falls down uh on the enemies uh beautiful 2d visuals in the uh, in the style of has been heroes the trine heroes definitely need to perform some heroic deeds in order to complete the quest from another universe the expansion also adds a new region to the game called Sky Temple. Each Sky Temple run will include unique twists, new enemies, and new bosses. Updates to the main, main in game include eight new heroes to unlock, a uh, new Sky Temple region, 120 new spells, and 150 new items, which is crazy. Uh, and I was right about seed mode. Uh, the seed mode is a single difficult battle with preset loadout of characters, items, and spells. So basically, you can compete with other players to see how well you do. That's very cool. And I am excited for this. I feel like I haven't played the game in a really long time. And the idea of going back to it is a little daunting because I feel like I don't remember how to play. So I'm going to be starting all over from scratch. Now, that being in mind, look for some Has Been Heroes streams from me at twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. Has Been Heroes. Uh, Psyonix is currently working on a way to do cross-play on their servers and make it easier for more players to meet up no matter the platform. Hopefully that comes soon to the Switch, but I'll leave it's only PC at the moment. Okay. Yeah, that'd be really weird for me to invite somebody from Steam on my Switch, you know? I don't know how they're going to be able to pull that off. But that's okay. I deleted my gameplay round or my gameplay section. I'm not going to spend very much time talking about this because it's not a switch game, but I just wanted to say, what have I been playing since the last time uh, that I had my ep an episode and I've been playing Darwin project uh, for the last two days it's a it's a battle royale style game. It really feels a lot like Hunger Games uh, with some survival elements where you have to cut down trees and then craft arrows and stuff in order to survive. Very, very fun game. The thing that makes it unique in the realm of all battle battle royale games is that it has what's called the director. The director is a giant robot camera that flies around the world and uh, they can talk about what's happening in the game. So basically they're like shout casting what's happening is I was uh, playing with a buddy of mine named Bog Otter and we came upon some other uh, friend of ours named Resistance Fox and Bog Otter and I had made an alliance where we were going to have each other's backs. And uh, we were fighting against, fighting against Resistance Fox and the game director was there and gave 
uh, Resistance Fox like some buffs so to make it a little more fair since it was 2v1. And then a third per- or a fourth person got in on the fight. It was very, very exciting. And I've had a lot of fun playing that game. It's not coming to the Switch. It is an Xbox One exclusive uh, or Steam exclusive. But I just want to let you guys know it's a really great game. And that's what I've been playing. All right, lightning round. And it is time for the lightning round. Ace Attorney is coming to the Switch. This is coming from a Japanese website. So if you read Japanese, you can click on the link in the show notes. I meant to get... Okay, I I copied the wrong link. Let me go there. Sorry about that. Uh, here we go. This is um, at Mochi underscore WSJ. He's the tech reporter for uh, Wall Street Journal Tokyo. And he says, in an interview with Gigi, GG, which is a uh, Japanese uh, website, Capcom chief operating officer said the company's developing Switch titles aimed at release after April next year. The pipeline includes... Ace Attorney. I know a lot of people are very, very excited for news of an Ace Attorney game on the Switch. I've never played one. I've never played Dr. Layton. I know that people love these games and that they're really, really fun, but it's not my style of game. But if it is your style of game, it's one more genre to check off as we're having access to on the Switch. Uh, Next story in the lightning round is... Uh, from at Nintendo Versus on um, on Twitter, and that's a, an official account, by the way, uh, from Nintendo. It's basically their esports stuff. Uh, they said, "Ready for the next Splatoon 2 Splatfest? It is Team Sci-Fi versus Team Fantasy. The Splatfest kicks off next Friday, 11 uh, November 17th at 9 p.m. Pacific time. So, uh, Sci-Fi versus Fantasy. That's very cool." I'm curious which team you guys will be on. Please let me know. Uh, And then finally, uh, we've got a... I'm just looking at the quick press release from Nintendo. Uh, They're talking about... Oh, scrolling, scrolling. Here we go. They talked about snipper clips a little bit better, or a little bit more. They said, cut it out together. DLC, uh, Paper Pal, Snip, and Clip must cut each other into the right shapes to overcome new obstacles in this paid DLC update to the original... Snipper clips cut it out together game partner with friends or family to solve problems, including a new comic book and toy box worlds, three new blitz games and a stamp mode. You will also revisit the original levels using new shapes. This really seems like it's going to add a whole lot of gameplay to that game. And if you've not played snipper clips before, it's a really great game to play with other people. So I recommend it. Um, Uh, What else? Uh, Legend of Zelda is going to have some My Nintendo rewards starting yesterday, actually. Uh, You can get a wallpaper inspired by the Champions Ballot Expansion Pass DLC Pack 2. Um, You can get a 3DS theme for your 3DS or 2DS. And they're also offering 40% discounts for each of these games in the Zelda series. That would be A Link to the Past for the 3DS or Wii U. Uh, Majora's Mask 3D for the 3DS and Triforce Heroes uh, for the 3DS as well as Skyward Sword for the Wii U. So those are all 40% off. Uh, What I will warn you about is if you're interested in Triforce Heroes, it's a very good game, but only get it if you have three other or two other people to play with and those two people are local because playing it online is frustrating as, as all get out. It's really frustrating. Um... They, they went on to st- say that you can also redeem your points for the official Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword e-guide from Prima Games. So there's a bunch of stuff on there that they're talking about. Then they went on to say new games this week. I'm going to go through this really quick. So this is in place of uh, the coming soon thing because it's right here on the, um, on the press release. Uh, Batman Telltale series is November 14th. All these games are November 14th until I say otherwise. Lego Marvel Super Heroes 2, Rhyme. Um, I think Uno's already out. It'll do. Octodad, Neo Geo Street Hoop, 
Rock and Racing Off Road DX, Ben 10, Tallow Mare, uh, Maria the Witch, Cat Quest is uh, was available on the 10th, uh, Spell Spire, Super Putty Squad, Koi DX, Hulu's already out, Bond of the Skies, RTO, Workle Worlds, and Lords of Thunder. There's a bunch of games there. None of them really are jumping out to me other than. Um, Oh my gosh, Rocket League. Rocket League is the one that I'm very, very excited for. Also, L.A. Noir is coming uh, on the 14th. And Pinball FX3, I guess. I, I've played some pinball games before. Uh, Cat Logan in chat says, playing Doom right now. And then he also said that Cat Quest looks cute. I haven't looked into Cat Quest very much, but I did hear it was actually a pretty good game. Well, guys... That is all the time that we have for today. If there's a story that I missed or a topic that you would like discussed, please let me know. Uh, You can do so at any of the ways that I mentioned at the top of the show. I raised my hand up for the people who are listening like it, like the stuff was up there somewhere. Um, If you're looking for ways to support the show, there's lots of ways that you can do it. Let's talk about free ways that you can support the show. You can share the show with a friend. Find somebody else who likes Nintendo stuff and take your earbuds well, I actually don't do that. Take their earbuds, plug them into your phone and say, listen to this. It's great. You know, get other people to listen. Review the show on iTunes. Uh, that really does help. The more reviews they ha- that we have, the more popular the show is. And it means that we're more likely to get new listeners. Uh, another free way to support the show is by using my Amazon affiliate link. It doesn't cost you anything extra if you... Um, Uh, If you shop on Amazon already, it doesn't cost anything extra and I get a little kickback from Amazon. If you are looking for other ways to support the show, head on over to runjumpstomp.com slash support and check out the links to the Patreon or the Etsy shop. Thank you so much for listening and uh, special thanks as always go out to Noteblock and Tom Winter for the use of your music on the show. I really appreciate it. That's right, Vaxer. Force them to listen to the podcast. Exactly. Uh, Anyway, thank you for listening. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Save project. feel like I kept it pretty short today. Let's find out. Um... Align tracks end to end. Oh my god, are you kidding me? Thirty-five minutes. What game looks amazing, Captain Logan? Yeah, thirty-five minutes. I'll have to edit some stuff out. Oh yeah, Doom is gorgeous. Doom is 